Hi, welcome everyone to this Facebook Live today, Saturday afternoon. How are you? Bess McCarty here, coach for Business Life Network Marketers, um, also called the Shrink of MLM. This is um, a, a every Saturday and Sunday Facebook Live Ask Bess video column uh, where people can uh, come on or private message me beforehand and ask any questions about network marketing, careers, jobs, relationships, health, weight loss, or spiritual fulfillment. And what I do is I respond to your questions on here. Um, you can make it anonymous if you want to. But I, my message, my main message to you with this video class is that, that you matter. I hear you. I'll respond to you. And I'll show you a method of how to solve problems quickly. And um, I, another message is there's, there's a solution to every problem. You're bigger than every problem that, that comes in front of you. And the solution may be closer than you think. And you can become a master problem solver. And you don't have to do it alone, and I'll help you to do that. So the topic today that I wanted to uh, present about initially before I get into questions, and, and if you do have a question, please feel free to type that in. And what I'll respond is uh, maybe some ideas, or maybe, maybe even ideas help, help you find your own answer to that. Because that, that's my favorite way to do it. It would make us each master problem solvers. So this is, um, I, you know, I messaged, uh, or titled this, Without Problems, There Are No Miracles. And for me, it's about embracing the problems of life, the challenges of life. Hello, Mike. Welcome. How are you? Mike's a wonderful person to follow, everybody. Mike Limmer, <clears throat> a wonderful entrepreneur and spiritual person and personal growth. Uh, man, met Mike at, at Eric Warrior's GoPro, and we become friends on Facebook after that. Um, so what I'm, what I'm realizing is that, gosh, there is no perfect corner of the world. There's going to be problems everywhere and with every relationship and with every person. You know, that, that we're all dysfunctional to some degree. We all have big problems that we're working through, and the world is full of problems. And, and that's okay. And that's okay. Because every single one is really a gift. It's a spiritual uh, message and a spiritual gift in that for us to grow in the ability to love and serve life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you, Mike. And everybody else who's watching the replay, I'd love if you type in replay because I want to thank you for that and also like to hear where you're from. So, um, you know, even if you're watching the replay, love you, love you to type in questions, comments, tips, or anything like that. And um, I can ask, answer any questions you might have on tomorrow's live as well, because I'm here every Saturday and Sunday at noon Eastern Time, the Ask Best video column. <laughs> okay, so this is, um, this is, oh, a great mm, breakthrough that I've had about learning to embrace the problems, learning to uh, accept, not just accept, but actually to embrace and feel adventurous about solving them, about, okay, well, what is life bringing me? Um, I, I saw my niece last night, and she is um, moving, or she has just moved with four little kids, and every single thing has gone wrong in their house that you could imagine in, in the new house, and including a basement flooding and all this stuff. A lot of things have gone wrong. I said, you feel like you're kind of in a pressure cooker, you know, like, how can I take one more thing? Can I stand one more thing? And she goes, yeah. And I go, yeah, I feel like that too in my life with starting six new classes and, and all that that takes. And sometimes I feel like, you know, how can I how can I possibly cope? But she said, well, you look great. You know, this must be really suiting you because you look really good and really energized, even though it was the end of a long day and all this stuff. And I realized, I think it's because I have I've, I've had a breakthrough, a personal growth break, a personal breakthrough, about learning to embrace and accept the challenges and even enjoy them and say, okay, here we go on another adventure. You know, um, life is playing ball with me; it's throwing me some fast curves, um, so that I can see how I do with it. Well, how how will I do? And can I learn to be quicker, lean more? Um, you know, how can I learn to navigate these things? So I feel myself getting better every day at navigating the problems. And I found a way to do this, and this is what I teach. I call this process Real Conversations uh, with ourselves. And it's a way to solve any problem that comes up, be it physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, any of those areas that I mentioned. And the way that we solve these problems, I noticed when I observed that um, uh, uh, when I get from problem to solution real quick, like in minutes, or I teach clients and students to do that, 
it, it's a four-step process. I notice always goes through these same four steps of we, we recognize the problem and then we um, recognize the emotion that's underneath that and then the need that's underneath that and then the solution to that need because every problem is a sign of an unmet need. So all we have to do is be a detective and uncover the need that's under that and then the problem goes away. It's really logical, isn't it? It's real sens sensible and logical, but it always works. And this is a method I've used for over 25 years now. I discovered this uh, 25 years ago, um, organized it, made a note of it, you know, documented it, wrote it down, and then trademarked it and taught it in classes to, to clients and students how to get from problem to solution in minutes. So I'll give some examples of that in a few minutes. But first, I just wanted to talk about the beauty of problems. John Maxwell says, there are no problem, uh, without problems, we wouldn't have miracles. And he being a spiritual man, and me too, I happen to also be a minister, and he happens to be a pastor, or used to be. Um, so I, I think that people who are in touch with something bigger than them, whatever we might call it, you know, God or higher power, or universe or life or love or whatever, something bigger than us that is at work, helping us through the problems. I think that this bigger thing gave us the problems to make us grow and then it also gives us the help needed to learn the lesson and to grow. You know, like, like playing ball with me, you know. Um, life is having fun with me. <laughs> and I'm having fun with it when I don't resist it, when I look at problems as a game and as an adventure. There's a something magical um, that, that's bigger than us that gets to working when I am in a pressure cooker and I feel like, how can I squeeze one more thing in? What should I do? I'm confused, overwhelmed. There's a magical thing that happens that I call effortless effort. And you might have heard this used by other people, this term used by other people too. But it's, it's when something kicks in, when, when I am so squeezed and pressured in my, in my pressure cooker and that I have to let go of my own control of it, my own wishes and say, okay, to life, to my inner guidance, what do you want here? What should I do here? It looks like there's five things vying for my attention all at once. They all seem equally important. They all seem vital and life, you know, threatening if I don't do them all. So um, life, which one should I do first? You know, asking my own inner guidance because I believe that part of us, there's a higher part of us, soul, that, that knows and uh, that we have access to something beyond us even that can help us and guide us. And so this is my technique to get out of the pressure cooker. I say, okay, what should I what do I know that I should be doing first? What should I do first? Asking my own inner guidance. And then I get that thing. What should I do second, third, or fourth, or fifth? But I take the first thing and I focus just on that. And do it well and do it with love and do it with quality. And so then I go to the next thing. And with as much speed as I can, right? Because I got a lot, lot waiting in line. But still not, not rushing it. I'm doing it with quality and focusing just on the step in front of me and doing it well. And then I go to the next step and next step. Because if I look at the whole darn mountain, I do get overwhelmed, depressed, um, paralyzed. I can't, I can't comprehend the whole big thing. It, it wears me out. It keeps me from focusing on the one thing in front of me. So that has been my technique lately that has really worked for me. And probably why she said, you look great, you know, in the face of all this. This must be good for you because it looks like you're thriving on the, this challenge. But sometimes we get really stuck on maybe what we want or being in control or having it our way. Have, has anybody ever felt that? <laughs> I'd love if you type in yes, <laughs> because then I'll know that I'm not alone. Um, I saw a child once who had an owie on a toe, and he went to put a Band-Aid on it, and he was three years old. And um, the Band-Aid was coming off because the Mickey Mouse Band-Aids weren't sticky anymore, and they didn't really stick. And so his mom was trying to put on a Spider-Man. Um, band-aid which did stick and he goes no no I want the Mickey Mouse band-aid and he was just like his life was going to be over you know he was just going to die if he didn't get the Mickey Mouse band-aid <laughs> and his mom you know how can you reason how can you reason with that and the emotional attachment of a three-year-old and yet don't we do that we say no I want life to go this way you know I've got to have the Mickey Mouse band-aid <laughs> I just got to have it and the child just cried like you know the world was going to end like he just lost his best friend if he couldn't have that Mickey Mouse band-aid stick on 
And, and don't we do that? You know, I believe that I saw that child because I thought that is me. You know, I get attached to having it a certain way. Like I wanted it that way when there was a better solution. And life was trying to give me that, but I'm so attached to my lesser solution that I'm clinging to it and won't let life bring me the bigger and better one. Like one time I was in a relationship that um, had its time table, but then it needed to end. We did the personal growth work that we needed to do together, and it needed to end because it was no longer good to be together. But I'm hanging on, <laughs> and I'm trying to make this relationship work, and I'm, you know, we're going to counseling and trying this way and that way and reading books and trying this and that because I didn't want it to end. I was attached to it, hung on to it too long. Um, but it did end because it needed to. And it was a year later, and it was a painful ending too because I was hanging on, but it was a year later that it occurred to me that I asked life the wrong question. I was asking, how can I make this relationship work? I should have asked, should this relationship go on? <laughs> should it work, you know, past now? And uh, it was a, it, it, I just had a hilarious, you know, aha moment and the, you know, the humor of this, of me, you know, clinging and asking the wrong question like, like the little band-aid. So effortless effort to me is when, you know, people, people have asked me, you know, as, as a coach and a therapist, I'm a body-mind therapist, holistic health practitioner, and a coach for 35 years now. Um, and people have asked me, well, you know, what do I, how do I, how do I get out of overwhelm? How do I um, deal with the confusion and, and the pressures of life? And my... My solution to this is to realize that there's something bigger than us that wants to help us. It brought that problem for us to solve, and it also brings the solution. And it wants us to develop our creativity. And if we can tune into this, that's what I call the effortless effort. Yes, we do our part, but we ask, we listen, we follow, we focus on the thing at hand. And we let something bigger than us walk with us, help us, aid us. I saw a video the other day where a lady was saying, when you feel overwhelmed and, and you don't know where to turn, that's exactly, she, in her words, that's exactly where God wants you. Now I, can, now I can work through you. Now I can use you. Now I can give you direction. Before you were not coachable. Your own ego was in the way and all your, yourself was in the way. But now if, you're, if your control issues and your ego, if, you're, if you feel out of control, that can be a good thing. <laughs> that's where life can step in and that effortless effort can help. Um... And what's it all for? What's life all for? Some people, including me, believe that life is for learning love and service to other people. There's a real uh, cool story that I heard from my spiritual teacher called the giant eating utensils of heaven and hell. <laughs> I wonder if you've ever heard this. Uh, I, I like it a lot. It was about this, this man who um, got to visit heaven and he got to visit hell to see the difference. And he goes to hell first, and he sees, man, it's a beautiful place. There's all these lavish surroundings and, and um, food laid out, you know, like a beautiful, rich banquet, all this amazing, beautiful, um, tantalizing, mouth-watering food all laid out. And, and you know, the, um, everything there looked like it was of luxury and comfort. But the people were emaciated and unhappy. And he thought, how could this be? You know, you're living in a lap of luxury, all this beautiful food. Why are these people emaciated? Um, and then he saw when it was dinner time, the dinner bell rang, and he saw that um, that the people to eat were required to use these eating utensils, which were about three feet long. And they could get the food on the eating utensils, but then they couldn't get it to their mouth. So they starved. And that was hell not being able to eat the beautiful food and being required to use those eating utensils. I said, okay, understand hell. Now, the tour of heaven. He goes to the tour of heaven. What does he see? Lavish surroundings. You know, the best furniture, um, uh, furnishings, everything. Uh, and the tables, laden full of food, just like hell. Beautiful laid out, beautiful, um, luscious, um, mouth-watering food, all laid out on the tables, just like hell. And dinner time came. There was the giant eating utensils again, three feet long, just like hell. 
and people were required to use that to eat. But there was a difference here. The people were well fed and smiling and happy and, you know, robust and, and thriving. He said, what, you know, what's the difference here? You know, how can they eat with those utensils? And so when the dinner bell rang, he got to see them in action. And the people actually picked up the food and they fed each other. It's the only way. That is a perfect analogy to me of life. That the only way that I'm going to be happy and the people are going to be happy, we're, meant, we're not here to be alone, which I've tried that, <laughs> I've tried to be, but we are here to meant to serve each other and to learn that. And life can be kind of hard knocks until we learn that, can't it? So my um, real conversations, let's see, my real conversations class, um, that this Ask Best column is every Saturday and Sunday at noon Eastern Time. And you are welcome to come on, ask a question, private message me a question. Um, let me know if you want it to be anonymous. Probably I won't mention names on here, but I'll just, I'll just respond to the, the questions here on this live. And for people who want to dive deep with me into these issues and into the real conversations process and learn it, I am leading a Tuesday, a weekly class every Tuesday night. It is an ongoing class. It begins at 9 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday. It is um, by phone, not recorded. It is confidential. And so you can even be anonymous if you want to and use a made-up name. And you can get on these weekly classes. We start out with a lesson about real conversations, those four steps, and how to solve any problem in minutes, walking from the the um, uh, acknowledgement of the problem, the emotion under that, the need under that, and then how to solve that need. Because the problem is trying to solve that need in a dysfunctional way, an unhealthy way. And when we find that need and we're able to solve it in a healthy way, then the problem just disappears. It works. It's worked for me and my students and clients for 25 years now. And this is my life work. This is what I share with people. So I started this class. Um, this phone class, people can dial in, and uh, we start out with the, learning the, real quickly a brief lesson about the real conversations process, and then people do their coaching processes with me, live, right there, live coaching, um, and uh, then after we complete the processes, the group will give feedback, or offer feedback, those who want to, like a mastermind group. So very valuable, intense, personal growth work. And improve your mindset, um, upgrade your life skills, learn to be a master problem solver. And then you don't need to worry about, you don't need to be afraid of anything in life, right? If you embrace and know that you know how to meet life, you know how to, to um, tackle the problems that are in front of you, you're a master problem solver, you can get through it in minutes, which is what I do every day. I use this every day, and I have for 25 years since I evolved it. Um, it's, um, I don't know what I do without it. That's what I love teaching people. So. Um, the class is available at bestmccarty.com Real Conversations class. And when you scroll down there, you can find that um, if you want the free, a free report on this of how to use this for yourself, a free audio chart and directions how to journal yourself through the four steps of Real Conversations, that is free for you. So this link will contain both those, the class and the free tools. And I'll post a link, but it uh, right now is bestmccarty.com slash real conversations class and uh, I'll see you on the live tomorrow um, every Saturday and Sunday noon Eastern time thank you for watching I love you guys I'm here to help you're not alone you don't have to do this alone take care bye bye